What's going on, friends and family? Thank you guys so much for watching or tuning in to Every Day is a Saturday with your host, me, myself, and I, Brian Roof. Hey, guys, another great day, another great interview. And I'm excited for my next guest because I got to meet this guy personally, hang out with him for a good couple of days. Uh, we had a lot of fun and then uh, had to leave, unfortunately, when we got to <clears throat> hang out in uh, Nebraska at Hero Stock. Uh, there we go. All right. So I'm excited to have him on and have him talk about his experience because, you know, he did 20 years and, you know, it's hard enough to do four years in the Marine Corps, but 20 years is, is one hell of a commitment. Um, all right. So my next guest served his country proud in the United States Marines, making it a career and retiring after 20 years of honorable service. He continues to serve his brothers and sisters through his nonprofit sit rep 22 and supporting other nonprofits as well. He's doing big things in the veteran community. Let's meet our next guest, Tom Edinger. Hey, what's, what's up, up, brother? I'm hey, doing man. good, man. We got you on here finally. You know what I mean? It's uh hey, good to man, have it's you a, on, brother. It's always a struggle, you know what I mean? It's a text, it's a left on red, and then it's a I thought I replied. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey well you know what i had the opportunity to sit on uh your podcast that was a lot of fun and yes, sir. Uh, you know i was excited to have that and i didn't even mention that part he also is a host of a podcast show uh all that stuff so let's get to know more about tom where you grew up brother what made you choose the good old united states marine corps and uh tell us about your career man yeah man so i grew up in uh northern and southern new jersey i um and what once i got about a high school I, I went to a technical hvac high school um well votech high school and i did hvac and um so i did heating and air uh graduated high school and then it just wasn't working you know what i mean you're you're, you're working i was only 18 working and then the money was coming and going, but that's all you were doing. You, you graduate and you're not really living life. You're just straight into that blue collar life. You know what I'm saying? So with that, um, I just decided that I was just gonna join the Marine Corps. There was no, I never grew up thinking about it. I had friends that were in the uh, delayed entry program. Um, my wife, her brothers were in the Marine Corps. So there, there was things, but there was no, like, I, I didn't grow up projecting it. Like I was going to join the military. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. That was same so, thing. yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just say, yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I had the opportunity to talk to a guy. Um, he was a, uh, I think he was probably 20, 30 years at that point. He was a master gunnery sergeant and he lived down the street. So when he lived down the street, I went and sat with him just to break bread. Uh, they, they, they made it available for me and I talked to him and he was in, like I said, 30 years, 28, 30 years at that time. And, um, he was in the reserves at this point, but like he was also as a reservist, he was also a state trooper, like constant, you know what I mean? So by the time, by the time I worked at Fort Dix maps, he was still working. He was working security there for, for uh, the Department of Defense. So I had the opportunity to meet a dude like that. That's what I'm trying to say. And right. we broke bread and I asked him, why'd you join? He said he was mad at the world. And I said, yep, let's get it. That's all I need to hear. You know what I'm saying? We broke bread and then, and then that was it. I just went, uh, signed up and then, um, what was the Went year that you joined? I joined I joined September 20th, 2000 and I went to recruit I went to recruit training February 12th, 2001. Damn. That was quick. Yeah. If I if I wanted to go reserves, I could have probably left in December. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it it wasn't that long. I, I didn't have that uh that whole experience that, you know, people having the late entry program and yeah. you know learning and getting that whole senior year vibe i just went and did it <laughs> so yeah, i mean dude you know our our stories are 
pretty similar in that manner because same here didn't expect to to join you know kind of was like fucking going through the the phone book one day and i knew my cousin had already he was in the delayed entry program as a junior and uh, i and i'm a year older than him so i was already graduated and all that and i was just like all right all right i'm gonna go talk to this guy and the only guy that answered the phone that day was the marines and I already had talked to an army recruiter. That dude had bugged the crap out of me, bro. And then I was just like, yeah, man, let me let me go. You know, and mm-hmm. it, it was pretty quick for me, too. I didn't really have a lot of time. And I only had watched, like, Full Metal Jacket at this point in time, to you know, to even know what the hell I was getting myself into. It's funny you say that. Like, that was my my deal. I, I quit all my jobs. And I, I think December, and I watched the the – the VHS delayed entry video they give you, I watched that and Full Metal Jacket at least once a day, and ran and and tried to do a couple pull ups and ran and did some crunches like whatever was in my book. You know what I'm saying that they he gave me. Yeah, he right. was like, "No, this." And I said, "Roger that." So so like that's how that was my yeah that's how it began. So it it yeah. it worked out. I would say. That's yeah, good. Yeah. So. Now you get into the Marine Corps. Now, how was uh, boot camp for you, bro? Like, tell us about your experience with boot camp and and all that, because you know, obviously, not really having an opportunity to get ready for that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, just besides watching a couple little videos, like I, you know, I'm pretty sure you and I watched the same thing and the exact same thing. So I'm just wondering how your experience was in boot camp. Yeah, bookmark that video in your mind. We will come across it again, but um. But um, when I when I when I joined, when I got to boot camp, um, it was so surreal. You know what I mean? Like everything was like, is this happening? And this is happening like right now. Like I'm here, and then you know you always get that that moment. Everyone says like, oh, I made a mistake. Now were you on yeah, the East Coast? I was on the East Coast. I went to Paris Island. Okay. So, um, when you get down there, you know, you go through the whole thing, but you know, what's going to happen. Like, you know, so, so I was, I was prepared as far as everyone that I ever talked to told me it was going to suck. So it was like this, I, you know, that the whole, you know, we didn't prom- promise you a rose garden. Like I took that face on, like, this is going to suck. How much? you know we'll see (laughs) right the only thing was i knew i couldn't leave like there was no quitting there was no going home like that that wasn't a factor there wasn't a i'm doing this for my parents i i didn't have no one in my whole family that that was ever in the marine corps you know you had the grandparents and you know they served korea world war ii but like we didn't break bread on that you know what I mean? And my right. the way I grew up, we didn't go look at my medals. What what's that ribbon mean? It didn't happen. So when when I went, it was this is new. And like I I was 19 by the time I left. Um because September, my birthday's in October, and I left. It was like this is how it is now. Just pull the ripcord and however the parachute was gonna take me, I was good with it. So so boot camp sucked. I mean, I went in February. Like I said for the hundredth time, but in February, it, it's still so I warm. I went in February but, too, bro. <laughs> and it's still like it's still kind of it's cold, but it's still Paris Island, so it's still hot. So you know, everyone gets sick. You, you're going through the whole deal, um, but like, it, there was no good. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. There's no moment where I was like. We're a team. You, you you get the game. Like once you're playing the games, go touch the hatch. You know, go touch the bulkhead. Go sit. Do this. Do this. Get a mattress. Get this. Once you understand it, it you get it, and then you become obedient to it. You know what I mean? So right. it, so once you get that, depending on anyone's experience, uh, uh, you know, recruit training. Once you get it, it becomes a lot easier. Because then you're locked on, you're sounding off, you're moving fast, like you're doing it. But when it until you get it, you think you're still you. You know what I mean? You're still, 
like you know whatever we always had the hard guy it's a chip that on the shoulder it's a chip mm -hmm. on the shoulder and they knock it off and yeah. they will knock it off at some point whether it takes two weeks three weeks six weeks they'll keep at it until they chip that away and you always kind of know in boot camp the ones that they do that to i was one of them they they were really you know i couldn't do nothing good enough for them i couldn't run fast enough for them i couldn't go you know i couldn't breathe right for them it was roof get up to the quarter deck roof you know <laughs> man they're burning me so so my experience differs a little from yours <laughs> so after receiving you know you're there you go through receiving for the first week then you take the ist and then after the ist the next morning you go to your new platoon you know you get picked up by by you know the the whole series and then lead follow whatever the case so i got called out the night before me and like two three other guys and they told us to pack our shit up because we we're moving to another platoon because people there were on the buddy program wow. so so it was like this okay so let me remind you this was i'm lying to you this was friday because friday you, we ran the ist and we dumped all our shit because saturday i had to go you know you dump all your shit they kick everything around black friday while we're while we're putting everything back they said go shower when we came out of the shower they said take your shit in the morning you're gonna go over there so when i got to the you know <laughs> i'm walking with a foot locker i'm walking decks up over and, and you, they don't give you a tour of the you know the barracks when you're when you're there so right. he said and everything's and i'm just and there's yeah, there's yeah, more yeah, yeah. bro there's marines out there yeah. there was marines out there drill instructors on the catwalk and they're screaming at me and i'm just right and I, <laughs> i'm just like you know so when i check in the to the new drill instructors they do a um uh like a junk on the bunk you know they all your initial issue let's see right. it give me one black wool sock I'm supposed to have six pairs i held up one one sock <laughs> let me see let me see um six black dress socks one black dress socks now you know you had woodland camis right so the old school joints so the guy next to me in my last platoon right exactly the, the guy with me in my last platoon was about a foot shorter than me so when we're just grabbing shit and shoving it in our sea bag he got mine i got his and now we're worlds apart you understand what i'm saying we're worlds yeah, bro, apart. that's why i'm laughing over the whole so, time because i already knew where this was <laughs> yeah bro so like then so after i get yelled at about everything like like i you know what i mailed you're, each piece yeah, home <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you're the new guy like, in the damn platoon too bro, bro not a fucking yeah. envelope not a not a fucking envelope not a woolly like everything someone you know someone has 10 pairs of socks you know what I'm, you know what i'm saying so like that that was my welcome to paris island induction so after that that was that was saturday let's say sunday we're in the head and we're coming out and someone says something there i go smiling and all i see through the through the window is the drill instructor looking at me after that i was on the quarter deck all the time like it was a a period of time i wasn't known they didn't know my name they might have but like i wasn't that guy right right but right. i was always invited they i introduced myself that moment when that drill instructor or they looked around they said you goofy motherfucker, go you know what i mean so like yeah. <laughs> when you, i think there was like 70 kids in our in our in our platoon 70 80 so they knew who i was because i was smiling so there's not many people smiling in that environment you know what i'm saying so so that's that that's how boot camp went <laughs> oh my gosh bro that shit's hilarious though i mean 
boot camp is is a rough spot it's a it's a weird world to be in you, you can't express it you're in there with like 70 motherfuckers yeah but you can't even really talk to them the whole time you get like four hours on a sunday most of you go to church because you want to you know everybody all of a sudden is like going to church because it's a little civilian like when you're going in there and and praising god and, and all this stuff but Every, I think everyone went to church to cry. Yeah. Because everyone that was in church was crying. Everybody was definitely <laughs> so, crying, bro. It was either the music, the spirit, or or you knew you was coming back. <laughs> so, so so they were the choices you had. <laughs> Man, yeah, dude. It, that was I ain't gonna lie, I went to service um, you know, on Sundays and I probably did drop a couple of tears myself. I mean, it is uh that music does get you and you and for me, you know, my first way, first time being away from home and all that stuff and, and just being away from my family. And as you know, bro, you get that like that little 30 second minute call when you get in there that first day and it's scripted on the damn wall of what you need to say. Hi, mom, I made it. I'm good. And, da, 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 you know, boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to know how that went? Answering machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Answering machine. So, so, yo, it's been great since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Your so, boot camp experience was just, man, yo, just, you were just getting chewed out you're left and right, too, because when you left that one platoon, went over their half ass, oh, you yeah. were set up for failure. You know what I mean? And they knew that. Like, he's going to get his ass chewed. You know, yeah. they, they knew that shit. You want to know something cool? Because you know it's alphabetical? How the racks are right right because 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 your asshole name you're now 18 18 f or and i was like great 18 fucking f yeah, so now uh, i'm trying to find I, socks I was, number, I was number 36 <laughs> so <laughs> i was trying to find socks camis that fit me <laughs> you know what i'm saying that that deep dive with the laundry recruit like yo Hit the head for a second. <laughs> this will be your, like, I need this Gibby shirt. Oh, man. Yeah, dude, because you were probably struggling there for a second, too, getting a, uh, just having the right camis, right socks, undies. You probably ended up with some small skibbies. Because even, like, you know, in the, when you're in boot camp, there's no boxer briefs. You know, at least when we were going, it was uh, tidy whitey. <laughs> You know, you see, called them this is a mystery. It's a mystery to me because everyone I've ever talked to, we only wore PT shorts. It could have been the the drill instructors, but that's all we wore. Oh no! Well, legs, when no we legs. wore the tidy whities, was dress uniforms. No nah, man, so we always had to wear the stinking tidy whities. Like, so we get out of the uh, when we were in there, we get out of the showers. And then we'd have to go do a, a, a hygiene inspection. So they would have us all online and we would be there in our, in our whitey tighties with our green shirts tucked in the back of our, of, of them. And we'd have to sit there like this and then it would be like uh snap. And then you have to like <laughs> turn your head or something. Cause they yeah. wouldn't see that you cut your, uh, washed under your fingernails and made sure that you were hygiene. Right. And made sure that you shaved like, like when you turned your head and all that stuff. But yeah, dude. They, I mean, and then we walked around in some shower shoes. We had shower shoes, white yeah, tighties with uh, the shirts tucked in the back. And, and that's every time after hygiene. And then we would be, we slept in our whitey tighties and uh, the shirts, the green shirts. No, nah, we slept in tucked our in. boots. We had, to tuck them, we had to tuck them in our whitey tighties. We had to tuck our green shirts in our whitey tighties, bro. I, I call bullshit on everything. We I'm telling like you, we babies, wore. Bro, we look like Dewey's walking around with our little. Nah, that see now. I thought I was tripping. I was like, "Am I fucked up? Maybe it's me." This no, is West Coast. This is West Coast Marines, though. Mm. You know, Hollywood. They, they, you know, we might. Holly, you know, we could have been. They might have wanted to see us in our undies more. I don't. All know I know is maybe that's the thing. But I remember we were always in PT gear. Like that was I'm um, like, because I remember when we went Holy to do right. That's the only time they would like really to wear a PT gear. Yep. No, we always said, uh, did y'all y'all don't wear skivvy shirts? Yeah, we had to wear those every night. 
tucked in our fucking whitey tighties. No, I mean with your cami. Morning, huh? Did y'all yeah. wear it with your camis? All right, I just want to make sure. I don't know when the nastiness began. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. I think, to... That was, I think <laughs> that's the salty Marines, bro. I think that's the older Marines not wearing the wearing the. Uh, oh, I know, I know. I was, I, a, I was a, I was like that. I'm like, hey, bro, are we supposed to wear? He's like, no, that's not even regulation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can't have hair popping out your chest. <laughs> I think I think there's a rule, like everything else written somewhere. There's a regulation about it, but who you're with and your CO exactly. makes <laughs> like, hey, put a shirt on. Hey, Commandant, put a shirt on. Roger that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Got it. Hey, so, so uh, when you, uh, you know, I, I mean, for me you know, earning my EGA was probably one of the proudest moments for me in my entire life. Cause I mean, um, like you said, bro, when you go, you do it for yourself. You know, how was your experience when you got your Eagle Globe and anchor and, um, you know, do you remember that moment when you did the crucible and all that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's a big deal and you, you build on to it. I mean, like, absolutely. I think that, that I don't want to diminish it. You know what I mean? But that experience, that part is is the crossover. That's at that point, like I said earlier, if you didn't get it by then, you're not there no more, or you shouldn't be. Because after you know, by the time you get your U Globe and Anchor, hey, you're you're there now. I mean, now they even got an extra week and all this other nonsense I don't want to get into, but like yeah. when 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 you're there, that's the difference. That's when it's like, you know, everyone's trying to lock everyone on. <laughs> right. No, nah, well, you go back. See, I mean, I know times have changed, but back when uh, I was in, in the, uh, in 2000, um, when you, so we would go up north, which was Camp, uh, Camp Pendleton, to do the rifle range, to do the field week, and then we did the crucible. And then we, you know, got our eagle of an anchor. And then we mm -hmm. went back to MCRD, back south. And we were there for, I would say, like the last four or five days because we had to, you know, do uh, graduation practices. We had the family day, um, you know, all those events. But when you go back there to MCRD, now your boots are bloused because before then, you're, 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 all your shit's not bloused up yet. They oh, y'all. Yeah, we they had us cuff everything up. They went. Yeah, we didn't do that till so I think first phase. After first phase, you blouse them. Nah, once we had a we yeah we basically had to become Marines before we actually could look like Marines. So um, that was their whole philosophy. Um, so once we got back and we went back to MCRD, it was all the recruits had to be like gangway Marine in the chow hall and. And stuff like that because now yeah. you know yeah. now yeah. we're considered a marine and and now mm -hmm. everybody's i remember being the new recruit you know and seeing all these dudes and they just looked sharp as shit they were fast they attacked the chow hall quick you know and, and you know just being envious of like that and being like damn bro i can't wait till that you know i get to that level because i remember always having to get out of the way for these guys like oh well, gangway marine you know <laughs> We had to yell it. Uh, I just remember seeing the like when we had to go to cash sales and you know you had to go spend all your money and buy eighty bottles or whatever or bulldog yeah, there know. was like hey six <laughs> people get a six people grab a, a laundry board why you know what I mean and then and then when you I think on family day I remember seeing them you the, their their shoes were white you know what I mean like really white head was really just shaved. You know, this guy, he don't need six bags. Why is he carrying six bags? You know what I'm saying? So, like, so yeah, that, that difference, that change, absolutely. And I think, I think, um, that moment to when people go to their, um, first duty station, all that changes. Yeah, bro. I mean, uh, so you know, kind of run us through, you went through MCT, obviously, which is Marine combat training. So, um, 
what was your primary MOS when you actually, when you signed up? It was 6046. It's an aircraft maintenance admin specialist. So we tracked everything that's on aircraft. Everything from the, from soup to nuts, the whole thing. It's tracked monthly, hourly, certain components. And we tracked it in the computer system and um, we did the analysis of everything. Okay. Like, nice. like if a like if a plane went down, a helicopter went down for maintenance. The analysis you'd be able to see how long it took to get to supply, supply to order, get it from here, us get it, and then install like downtime. So, so things like that, you know. Did you go to uh, Pensacola, Florida, for your uh, schooling, or or no? I went to that? Uh, Meridian, Mississippi. Oh no, kidding! Mm-hmm. Oh, Mississippi. That's interesting. I haven't heard of too many people coming out of school out of there. How was that? How was that, bro? That was a different world. Yeah, that was it was it was different because it was the base was in the middle of uh, nowhere. So um, it was. It was odd. Yeah. Yeah. And when I got there, the um, the barracks, there, there was a, bar- a, a barracks gunny that was there. Who just ran the barracks. But all the ship birds, all the ship bags that were, this is when ecstasy was hot. So like all these drug addicts, like they, they went home and now, you know, now they're popping on these drug tests. So like, it was so weird. Like, like that's what I mean. The minute you get there and everything changes and, and it's all about how, what you do during that time. You know what I mean? Like the, that moment you get the Eagle Woman anchor to that moment you're at school you gained all your independence back but it's like hey where am i at you know what i mean so that, that you that's gotta, the balance and you do got to conduct yourself differently bro like i mean mm-hmm. you know it, it it is a hard transition because and i never even really thought about this until you kind of are talking about it how that transition goes i never really reflected back on that part um but it it is interesting because you're right bro <clears throat> You know, from the time that you go through boot camp, you're very well guided and it's very, uh, you know, ABC and it's, it's hundred percent. You already know, you know, from sun up to sundown that you're going to be told what to do and you're, and you're being directed a hundred percent of the time, except when you hit the rack and, and shit. Um, but when you get out, you know, you get to go back home for leave for a, a real quickness. I got on recruiting assistant, so I got to extend. I did. I did out. the same. I did the same thing. <laughs> so I stayed at home a little bit, but I was still at that moment of time very disciplined, running my getting up and running, and just you know because I had that float in myself and that confidence in myself. And when I was running, I felt like I was light as hell, and I was like, yeah, like it's the best I think I've ever felt in my life. You know, um, mm-hmm. but then then you go into schooling, right? Or well, after you go to MCT. You know, which again, MCT is very guided and very, hey, this is what you're going to do. And there's still kind of drill instructor ish to you there, you know, and yeah, you get some weekend time, but they give you a time frame of, but like, your ass better be back here at this time, right? Now, when you get into school, dude, it, it, now it's kind of almost like a college life. Um, you know, you're in dorms, you're with all these <clears throat> different people learning, and then you have school time. And, and where I was, we had guard duty prior because our school didn't get picked up. So we had to go. I got colors. I had to do every morning, had to do reverently, and, and, and I had to do the folding of the flag and then bringing it down, all that stuff. Um, yeah, we kind of, I mean, at that point, when I left the Marine Corps, uh, Marine combat training MCT was 30 days. Right. So when I went through, oh, it was only 17. Yeah. That's what when I, I went through. I went it, was, through it was 17 as well. It was 17. So, but when I got to camp Geiger, we were there, boom out the next day, boom, came back, went to Mississippi, joined up, boom, went through six weeks there. Boom. And then I went to, um, for you. yeah, everything. So what I mean, everything was surreal. It, it was a sprint and you're just away from everything. Right. So it's easy to just process what's going on in front of you. It's easy. To, it's, and, and 
the longer you're in, that's how it is. Whatever you're doing, that's what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, so it's hard to deflect. So we didn't have that time. So th that time, I remember when, when I went through MCT, there was kids on gate guard. And I remember being scared as shit as they were picking platoons. And they were like, you go over there, you go over there. And I'm, I'm like, told. yo, I was just sitting there like, nah, like what? I never been, you know, I never been to Camp Geiger. I'm not trying to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, that was cool. Went through school, but I got stationed in August, August of 2001. And, and I got married September 16th, 2001. So after that September, when September 11th happened, everything stopped. We were just loading the helicopters up. We were going to, we were sending planes up to um, Pennsylvania to get bodies and up to New York for the, you know, to clean up. So like I had all this leave, you know, I'm young. I was like, of course they're going to let me go. I remember this, the maintenance chief, this mass sergeant, he just looked at me. He said, no, I said, <laughs> Like they planned this whole wedding. Like I haven't been home in like months. So, so like they were doing it. We did it. I went home Friday, got married Saturday, Sunday. We left. Wow. Drove to, drove to Jacksonville, drove back to Jacksonville and then, and then lived for a week in at Camp Lejeune in the, in the hotel. And then I bought a house and then that was it. Everything was perfect from then on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so keep well, in mind. So, so keep in yeah. mind what I used to tell the kids when I was on recruiting duty. I was 19 still. That was still the first year. I left in February. Yeah. Like I was I was on gate guard at fucking not, I wasn't even in the Marine Corps a year yet, and I was on gate guard once November yeah. rolled around. <laughs> and then I came off gate guard. And then they were like this, oh, you're going to the range. So then I, then I went to the range, came back from the range, double CACs out in, out in um, 29 Palms, where you go out and, um, you know, they do desert training. They don't do this no more. It's called 20 different names now. Desert Talon was the last one I remember, but it, we, we went out there and, um, yeah. I was out there till March, came back, at, and like my daughter was born in um, September. Wow. Like, so I didn't start till May, like the fleet life. Right. Yep. Per se. Cause when I, as soon as I landed, you're just going. I'm getting fucking screamed at. Cause at that point, none of the gates were closed on base. So now everyone's using these turnstiles. Now everyone's getting an ID card so you could slide it in to get, you know, onto the onto the flight line. So everyone's walking on grass. Everyone's trying to get the hell to work. Why are you, why are your boots dirty? Keep in mind this is spit shine boot time. Why are your boots dirty? I'm sitting here like <laughs> I just got a house. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm like this. So that's what I mean. It's the difference of where you're at. You're like, all right. Now I got to make sure they're perfect every day. Now I'm, iron I'm ironing my camis every day, spit out of my boots every day. Like, like you can't give no one a reason to fucking say anything to you. So once you're locked on tight, if you stay tight, you're good. Yeah. And that's a big thing in the Marine Corps, bro, is uh, just, you know, the main thing is, is you're going to get fucked with. It's just how much fucking wind do you want to have on you? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. the more you square yourself away, the less that gets, you know, for yourself and and you're likely to to get promoted and stuff. So we'll kind of switch it up more into uh, you know, eventually you get into recruiting and you become a recruiter. And uh, I've never had the opportunity to actually talk to a marine recruiter. I've had an army recruiter on here. So love to hear a little bit more about that life and uh how that was for you and um but you know i'm sure there was difficulties in it at times and and stuff like that because there's quotas but you know kind of run us through that all right I'll, I'll try to educate as much as i can so um i went to afghanistan 
as soon as we came back, back in that fleet life, I was in, I went to a non, non deployable unit for the, um, for the MV 22s, you know, the Ospreys now, but this is then they weren't even in the fleet yet. Like, so we were doing tests and evaluations. We'd go to California, do all these things in Nevada. Like they were taking these things to see if they, how much heat the ship could take because the, um, the tilt rotors turn. So when they land, so all these things going on, but for my job, it wasn't that exciting. You know what I mean? It wasn't thrilling. So I signed up to be a drill instructor, put my package in. Back then, it's it's similar now, but you get picked. Voluntold, you get picked for recruiting duty. So I could have said I wanted to be the president. You're going on recruiting duty. You're not getting out of it. So um, it's called the Hearst team. Then it's different now. Obviously, they changed it because they had all the other B billets involved. But I go, I get selected. I'm from New Jersey. I go to Pennsylvania. That's where I select where I want to go. Then you go to school, uh, seven weeks, eight weeks school out in San Diego. It's on MCRD. I was okay. going to say, I pro I've been on MCRD more times than, than, than enough because career recruiter school was there. Recruiting school was there. Oh, uh, any kind of, any kind of meetings. So I've been, I've been there a whole gang of time. It's, it's beautiful. I, I've been to Pendleton once or twice, I think when I lived there, when I was stationed at Miramar. So, so, but MCRD is beautiful. It's beautiful because anyone could go and you can still watch them drilling. You can still watch the graduations. You can still see everything. And, and that, that was the cool part of going back because no, no matter how long I was in, you always get that reminder. So I uh, went to recruiting school, became a recruiter in Philly in 2007, and um, things things were different. Things are different because um, it it was it's all it's all based on different types of leadership. So in other parts of the country, recruiting duty maybe recruiting duty is always difficult in the Marine Corps. I don't care where you are, right? So so. But in 06, 05, 06, 07, 08, all the way to 2010, it was the Marine Corps plus up to go to 202. So we were, numbers were raised because there's a certain amount of numbers that we have to hit. But that doesn't, so when you mean quota, the RS, the recruiting station CO, gets a mission. Your mission 70 for this month. Broken down, you have to have 50 males. Out of those 50 males, so many have to be alphas, meaning they have to be above 50 on the on the ASVAP. You're only allowed mm -hmm. so many under that. Like, so when I'm when the people say quotas, how big's the recruiting area? Well, we had from Harrisburg all the way to New Jersey, you know, North and, and, and South Pennsylvania. We had well, when I first got there, there was 15 recruiting stations. How many recruiters? You could have three recruiters and one boss. You could have four recruiters, one boss, excuse me, or a one in five, you know, one, one boss, five recruiters spread out max. So that's how the numbers get broken down and get, get sectioned by each recruiting station. So that took about um, 10 years on recruiting duty to, to, to be able to understand how that breaks down when I was the operations chief, because that's what I did. But when, you know, when you, when you, when you go on recruiting duty, it's, it's a lot different because everyone, everyone supports you. I appreciate you for your, so thank you for your service. Everyone loves the Marine Corps, but they don't want their kid to be in the Marine Corps, especially in 2007, eight, nine, you know what I mean? So right. like, like it was heavy in Ramadi. Like I wasn't there, but it shit, shit was heavy in the early 2000s in yeah. Afghanistan and Iraq. So like we and we were out there in Philadelphia, you know what I mean? Like so, so we were out there, we were out there working, and and stress levels is extremely high because standards are high because you don't still have your boss, you have other bosses.
they might not be your your uh, re- recruiting substation boss. So like you have a CEO, he'll be a major. You have a master gunnery sergeant or a math sergeant will be the recruiter instructor. And you also have a sergeant major, right? But each recruiting station has the 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 longest person that's been there, the most qualified person to be the staff NCYC in charge. So when all that's going on, numbers get pushed out. But when, when things are high, if, it's, if a station's not hitting, you know, what they're doing, it's because they don't work. So pe- people go and get their, their tree shook. You know what I'm saying? They get, they get helped out yeah. a little bit. So I, I, I never did bad on recruiting duty, but I hated every day of it. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't want to, I was blessed to be successful. Like I did well, but I wasn't home. You know what I'm saying? I sit here now. I'm fucked up thinking about it. Like after all this time, it's like, that's why I said it kind of earlier. Like, yo, like you're not home. It don't matter the road you're on, no matter what's going on at home. I have to go to work tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So like have to, that was the mentality. And I knew I had people that depended on me. I, and you know, they, you're there, you're, you're part of the, the, the Marine Corps. This is your job. This is what you're doing. They asked me if I wanted to be a, uh, a career recruiter in 2010. And I said, no, now I'm not trying to make this some prestigious thing, but I said, no, not everyone could be one. I mean, there's, there's, there's prerequisites that need to be hit, but I said, no, I went back to the fleet. And the minute I got to the fleet, I got reminded by the SAR major why I should have stayed the hell back in there because (laughs) I worked with, 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 um, every, every recruiting station SAR major obviously was a drill instructor or maybe a recruiter one or the other usually i've had but when they're a drill instructor you get that knowledge you get that experience and um once i went back to the fleet my old star major went up to pendleton and he came down and we broke bread and he's like how is it i was like it's boring like (laughs) i was i was you when you're successful and you're you're doing well, you're at you're 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 here because you only have one boss. So if you're one of the best of the other states, you're doing well. You know what I mean? When right. you go back to the fleet, you're just fucking regular staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. Fall in, and then when when once you do that, you're going back to the range. You're going to the gas chamber. You're doing everyday Marine Corps shit. You're like. I stood in front of this kid's house for a day because I wasn't allowed to come back to the office without him because there was angry men there. You understand what I'm saying? So like you go get that kid, Roger yeah. that. So people, a lot of the people perception is it's, there's no communication. Are, are there shady things on recruiting duty? As far as quotas, people get out every day. So people get out of the, of the, of every branch every day. Right. So, so they look at recruiting duty as a bad thing. Look what's going on in all the colleges. What are we doing? <laughs> like, like it's so pushed against locally. Like, think about it where you live. When's the last time? When's when did you see a Marine Corps recruiter? The only time, well, I, I mean, I just see the office because I drive by it because I, I live, I have to go pick up uh, stuff at the uh, pet store. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I already know, like right now, current situation, bro, the Navy's struggling so bad in recruitment that they're actually lowering the standard where they, you don't need a GED, nor do you need a diploma to, to, uh, to join. You just need to be able to pass the ASVAB uh, test. But, that's that's pretty big in, in the in you know in any branch for them to lower that kind of service but it just goes yeah, to show let, you, man it's it's hard to get people in like but let me tell now. you that i'll tell you the blowback on that you may lower the educational part right but 
what they instituted at MEPS now, because I got my ear to the streets still. When 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 what they do now is you send up your 2807, the pre-initial checklist, right? Of all your medical history, pre-medical screening, eval sheet, you send up to MEPS. They run that. If you've ever had prescriptions, been to the doctor, all this, it comes up now. Yeah. So a lot of it kids does do, it. do that now. So it Your used to be if 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 your kids join the Marine Corps, whatever say so like anything my kids had while I was in, their their medical history is in the system. You know what I mean? Right. It's the same thing now, but for everybody, in a sense. You know, I was I'm not there now, but what's described to me is it's a it's a hellacious process and it takes a lot of time. And you have a certain number you have to hit by the end of the month. You know why? Certain people have to ship every month. Certain people have to enlist every month because they're not enlisting to leave now. We're in February. I'm putting kids almost in October in a good year. Right. But you might be you might be trying to fill a spot of a kid leaving next Monday. And that kid's sitting at home studying for the ASVAP right now. And he's going on deck. Uh, bro, I've done it. He's going on deck tomorrow. And his ass is going to boot camp on Monday. In 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 the in the hardest situations. Which what I mean is like when you break that window, time window down, does it make anything easier in the Marine Corps? <laughs> it sounds like, like it gets really stressful for a recruiter too, especially because now. You need Jimmy to go past the ASVAB. You know, you, you're, you're like, oh, gosh, bro, hopefully he don't go in there and just bomb this shit. You know what I mean? And he's got some kind of smarts because, you know, if he fails that right off rip, dude, you're screwed. You had that. So you're the recruiter, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're, say you're the recruiter, but I'm your boss. I'm staff sergeant, whoever the fuck, Gunny, whoever, right? Yeah, Gunny. Over the, but, yeah. but now I had to schedule that kid to go to MEPS. So I had to call the operations officer, captain, whoever the fuck. And I had to talk to master or gunny, whoever ops chief to schedule them. They briefed the CEO that, you know, RSS, wherever is putting this kid on deck. That kid fails. You see the chain. <laughs> so when you mean stress yeah. and I, and I, and I was able, I worked at maps. I worked at different stations. I was the assistant recruiter instructor. I was operations chief. I was able to do all the billets that I saw when I enlisted. And I was able to do what I could from the rip because, like I said, it wasn't planned. But this was planned, obviously. Like, because 60% of like recruiting duty ruins careers. I don't know how, how bad it is now, but a lot of like, because you're not home. So if you have a weak marriage or you're not home or you're young, keep in mind, like when I first went out of there, I was 25. So that you're 25 and you're not home and you're not where you grew up. I lucked out. Like my parents still lived in Jersey at the time. My wife's parents still lived in Jersey at the time. But other people, you could have went to Ohio. You could have went to Wyoming. That's yeah. that travel and adventure. You know what I'm saying? That's that travel and adventure. So you're you're from Maine and now you're in Wyoming. Right. And now guess what? You're responsible for this section of this map in these high schools. Go get them. There's more training, obviously, and all this, but it's a different, I think it's one of the hardest jobs in the Marine Corps in that focus, in that lens. Not a not a sniper living out in the fucking woods for you know what I'm saying? No, no, There's no, the, yeah, it's it, so. it's obviously different elements of um and I agree, bro. It yeah, you know, you are up against numbers, you are up against parents, educators, uh, friends, girlfriends, right, sisters, brothers, kids, and their kids, <laughs> and, and some of them um Next thing you know, you, you're all excited about this guy. You guys put all this effort into him, and then you fucking run a background, and you find out he has some kind of a charge. Like, bro, you didn't tell us this. You know yeah, what I mean? On. Like, you, you know, I don't. But I know think how much back, time you know, happens all the time that you guys. Yeah, put a lot and of all that time you wasted, time, and you could have had 
four other recruits that you were putting in time, but you were like, dude, this guy's this, you know, everything else is coming back good, got a good ass to have score, uh, you know, everything. The next thing you know, there's just the one thing the dude forgot to tell you, you know, and and Mm -hmm. I mean, here's another thing. Now, do you have incidences where you send a guy in and that moment of truth time, you know what I'm talking about? You're in boot camp, you know, the the drill instructors scare everybody. If there's something that you didn't tell us and you didn't report, you better go and tell these people now. You know, and then you you see a couple guys like raise their hand and shit, and they think they're getting out. Now, do you have issues of anybody ever going there and then finding out when they go through the process? Like, wow, dude, this fool had this on his record. How did you guys not catch that? So check this out. The guy who who gives the brief, no matter if it, because I saw the brief at MCRD. I saw it multiple times at Paris Island, but. I saw the MCRD, they put up the picture. If you've had this stand up, whatever, that's a career recruiter. That's an 8412 career recruiter. There's no drill instructor. The drill instructor brings them in. Right. The they the snap city. down. So when that happens, it depends on if, 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 if there's an open fine or if there's some criminal thing. If it's open, he's gone. If fine open, he's gone. Like that's fraudulent enlistment. You know what I mean? So like when, when things like that happen, does it fall back on the recruiter? There's questions, right? There's questions, but I mean, it's, it's a hard, it's such, it's a matrix because there's a, he said, she said, this kid is at Paris Island. He hasn't slept in a day. And now suddenly he says this because he wants to go home you know what i mean so right. it's like what what what, what are you yeah. talking about yeah. and, and and brian yeah. it's not like that you know who calls you either the ops chief me or or the the, um, the ops oh and when they call you it's we get a call from paris island saying hey this kid's coming home because of this or hey he popped for this can you get a police check for this so like it's constantly just because they're there they didn't graduate yet things going on so every kid that does not graduate boot camp is a it was a waste meaning in that pipeline they went to maps a couple times they went to the hotel they they took a plane ticket they're down there now they have if they get hurt there, it, it extends it longer. So that's that mentality. You're there longer. You know what I mean? So it's real difficult to go in one, not difficult to go in one shot, but to, to make it and not break. So that's what I meant earlier. Once you get it, if you're nervous and you want to come out of your ass and said, you know what? I used an inhaler when I was six years old, but I don't have asthma. All right. Well, that's the self admittal. You're gone. Seven weeks into boot camp, gone. So, like, I've seen it. And then, regardless of the situations, if a kid comes home from boot camp, that's our majors calling you, too. Yeah. So, I've been, I've, I was on a crew duty for 12 years. We'll say that. <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> you had a couple conversations with some sergeant majors, I'm sure. I've had now, conversations with everybody. <laughs> so, now, let me ask you this, bro. Now, uh, for the guys that you got in there and going through recruiting, now, do you get like tabs on them, say they're fucking doing bad, or, or like, uh, you know, sometimes they're not meeting the weight requirement and they got to get put on like a uh, PCP? And they're there extra time. <clears throat> Do you get that kind of stuff relayed back to you guys? Like, hey, your boy, your boy just failed week two. He's gonna be held back, bro. Or how does that go? Or you guys don't really find out. Oh well, no, no, that's kind of there at the end, you know, when they graduate and and because we got to go home and some of us get to go do recruiting duty and all that. So what happens is uh if a kid's struggling, they call the operations of that recruiting station. Since we were in we were in Pennsylvania, they called me, or they called the ops out, and then I call. I let Star Major know, or then I call the staff in CYC, and he calls the the recruiter, and then we pray. 
that the recruiter calls. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll call this kid, he's this, that, and this. And they fell out all this drill instructors fell out, admin, admitted, um, admitted, um, ad, um, trying to think. So every, every portion of the enlistment. So when that kid, you would uh, first initially sit down with him, right? You have a pack card. You get his basic information of this person. He joins the depth. Now he's in the pool, right? So now he has a pool card. He goes to MCRID, that becomes an MCRID card. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's just, it's all digital now. I can only explain right. it from 2007, so it makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's all digital, but it's tabs. It's the same, same thing. When a recruiter gets a phone call or whatever, he has tracked events. He has to call this kid, write him these letters, and, and hopefully he does and the kid gets it, right? Like, hey, you're doing great. So, you know, don't, don't quit. Don't give up, blah, 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 you know, simplify, you know, whatever. So then the drill instructors have these ad, admin uh, responsibilities where they have to write on the evaluation. So to answer your question, when they write in there, you could look at it. Ah. So you could see this kid failed the IST, this kid's there, but it always becomes this he, he see um, back and forth kind of bullshit because I'd be like, hold on, the kid failed his his PF, final PFT. I've been in meetings with the Sergeant Major, CEO, Ops, so every, everybody, we're sitting there. This kid's getting sent home because he failed his final PFT. I said, how is that our fault? The fuck he do for three months? Fire the yeah. drill instructors. You know what I mean? Like, but it happens. Mm. It always things happen. So I mean it's it's a different people don't understand recruiting is a different world. Just like every MOS, if if you're if you're uh supply, you know supply shit. You know what I mean? There's a supply world. If if you're ordinance, there's a whole ordinance fucking Marine Corps world, you know what I mean? But when you're right. on recruiting duty, everyone got scars. <laughs> everyone got skin knees from running in the streets. Hey, Sarge, my feet hurt. I've been on my feet all day. <laughs> How many contacts do you have? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How many appointments do you have for tomorrow? All right, go get fucking busy. So, like, right. it, 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 so, like, I fucking loved it. You have to understand, I loved recruiting duty because I was able to, you changed lives. Like, take all the other bullshit out of it. You're taking kids from situations that aren't televised, that aren't fucking here. Like Kensington, Philadelphia, they say is the worst place. We drove around Kensington, fucking Pennsylvania, looking for kids. It's in Philadelphia. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a section yeah. of Philly. So like everything, like you have to find these roses in the concrete and then get them in a different position because everyone has a plan. Society has a plan. Right. If you can't go to college, you can't go to a university, hustle your ass those two years at a at a um fifteen hundred dollar a semester fucking community college, but then you get your associates, Roger that. Now it's 40 G's to, to go to this fucking school for two more years a semester. So it's like you're in the debt game. And so I, I loved how the Marine Corps can do it. Like anyone could you could join the Marine Corps and be very successful. The difference in the, the the difference is the person, right? So many we we put I put hundreds of kids. So I told you twelve years I was involved with that many kids going to boot camp, becoming Marines. Because when I was the op chief, I assigned the jobs. Because you got three choices. Hey, big dog, you're supply now. Step by. You're you're supply yeah. now. Woo. Your infantry. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck. Like, so, like, I, I, so knowing your involvement and in all that becomes more deeper once you step out. Cause when you, like I said, it's a rat race. So you're not, you're not thinking, like, yo, Brian, someone has to go to fucking boot camp on Monday. Call me when you find him. Click. How many Sundays I did that? Like, yo, that was like, that's how it is throughout the whole United States. Yeah. 
but it has to be that way in the Marine Corps. It fucking has to be that way. Because if you don't have good order and discipline, it becomes what we have now. So it, I, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it because I, I, I enjoyed the floating chaos. Like that, like everyone's a procrastinator at some point. When your ass is on fire, you can only make the best moves. And, and you're what, like, that's when I zone in, you know what I mean? And I enjoyed that. Not, not, not to discount the other 23 hours of pain and misery and regret. And you're looking at this board and this is stress and the traveling. Cause when, when I was in when I was the assistant um, recruiter and instructor, we drove to recruiting offices and lived in hotels and then go to this, go to this one for a couple of days. And then you go home on Friday. And then Saturday you have an event, a pool event. So then Sunday you have shipping. You see what I'm saying? So you're involved almost all the time. And it's not just a recruiter. It's everyone in that recruiting command. Everyone has to get involved. So it's, it's a lot. There's no, there's no room for fucking around. You know what I mean? But when, when you, when you work, you, 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 you have to work. And that's the, that's probably the hardest job, I think, because you have to call people. You're calling high school kids. Yeah. You're calling kids that graduated last you gotta year. You got to sell it, bro. You're partially a salesman. And you know, there's a lot of, there's a, a lot that goes into having to get someone to go in. I mean, just like my recruiter, he spoke, the words that I needed to hear for me to join. Oh, related it to like things that I liked camping, shooting weapons, you know, all this shit. I'm like, Oh yeah. You oh, know? but that's, but check it out. You know how many appointments you get to, to a kid. So you have to set three appointments, two appointments, one appointment a day. If, if no kids pass or one's a no show, you did nothing that day. Understand the mentality. Yeah. Cause, cause if no one passed the the you know the practice test, you didn't interview them. So therefore you don't know if they even want to join. Right. So if you have three, four, five recruiters, I would have three different offices. I'm driving to it just in my area as a staff and CYC. I'm driving, calling. Did they pass? They pass. Fuck yeah, Brian, we got them. Put them on the bar. How many pull-ups can they do? He's never seen the other side of the bullet bar. There we go. All right. And let me call the SAR major. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, can I, can I get, put this kid in as a depth risk or so it's, it, it's a, it hits you from different angles. And when you're that guy, I was able to, I, I tried to be as compassionate as I was once I was that guy. Cause yeah, I remember it's like, you got to find the uh, person's absolute weakness you know and and kind of almost account for it and make you know because and that's a hard thing bro you know someone could be super strong and they're like damn dude this guy's scoring high on the asvab but can't do jack shit on the pts and physical fitness tests mm -hmm. you know all that stuff he just can't do it and well so I, that's a whole other element yeah i don't think everyone should join per se right. to be honest but nah. you you get what you get out of it if, if you get to college, if you do this, if you, if like, I know people that got out after four and worked up in Cherry Point or flipped around and worked for Bell Boeing in New River, like, like did the transition from, you know, military to civilian life. Sure. So, so you, you, if you don't take advantage, you might as well, you went to college. It's the same thing. But, but, if you had, if you were a good Marine, you did your four years and got out, you have everything necessarily in front of you to be able to do it. Now, if you want to come up with some, it's my fault. I can't do this, that that's overthinking. We do that shit. We shit on ourselves anyway. Right. But now you have something to throw at and it bounces back at you even harder like this. I was successful before what happened. I had this confidence before what happened. It never fucking changed. You you changed. You know what I mean? Your mentality changed. And I think that's the problem. When 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 people get out, 
that's when that switch it either comes on or off or you you know that i've been fucking dealing with it lately were you on the contagion effect hunter show i got on at the end i know by the time i got on you were gone no i i jumped in the in the deal right from the beginning and when when he let me in the studio there was like 10 people my fucking anxiety shot up like i was like and like and it wasn't everyone that i know that you know you know what i'm saying so it was right. people and i was like and i start and i had to get off so there's a i could talk good and push and be strong but i you know everyone deals with shit every day and sure. i hit eric i hit eric up i was like oh i'm sorry man because i couldn't i couldn't the whole night unfolded in front of me like you know what i mean like i was i was just having that anxiety attack and it's rare in that instance because i was comfortable i was ready you know what i'm saying i, I was ready yeah. to, to do to talk and but shit happens like that and you you come to that road and you have to come to acceptance of not analyzing just yourself but i think and this all comes together but if if, if your perception is different from someone else's so is that conversation so say your wife says something to you you say yeah she only hears it she didn't see you smiling waving your hand yeah and she comes down like what yeah like you're rude or something <laughs> you see what i'm saying yeah that whole conversation just changed due to perception yep so so that's for veterans that's like my perception is not I, always reality it you never know? is because right my wife might not know the conversation i've had in my head the last 10 minutes sure and then and then reality hits and i'm like what you, you know what i'm tone, saying and just by the difference of a tone you know what i mean yeah Can make a difference and, in the reaction and situation like people things things get trip people out so i think when you get out you have to rely on yourself and build yourself up with everything that was given to you well, this is a good time to transition, I think, now. And then talking about, you know, 20 years in the Marine Corps, bro, is a long time. And and, and, and those 12 years, those last 12 years of your career were freaking high stress, high level stress, right? Mm -hmm. So you get out, bro. Day one of not being a Marine, what is that like for you? well COVID happened so that was the greatest thing ever because i retired november 10th 2000 and i didn't go to work from august because i had leave i had my terminal and everything but the, where i lived the base was locked down mm. i started 75 hard i just started like i was in the bed i was more clear less stressed like and i didn't have to go nowhere no one was around you know what i mean like it was great for me and then we moved and then I, well before 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 i officially retired i went and i got um certified to be a personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach i was i was uh, a first form um ambassador at that time and a coach on the app so i was i was trying that that was the avenue i thought this is what i'm doing i'm having fun but after a while it was it wasn't the my go-to it wasn't my thing there was no, nothing inside of it you know what i mean and then veteran suicide it hit me one night this is what we're doing this is this is the my passion this is and i don't know that many people that killed themselves yeah and but it's the environment i was in i can only compare it by thought this i i know what the shit i deal with it's easy to to under it's easy to, to to bridge that to anybody and anyone dealing with other shit you know if that makes sense like it's 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 an emt it's a firefighter it's a police officer it's anyone that served you get that stress you understand that emotion you understand that job is gonna ajar something you know what i mean something's not gonna be right today's mental health is different 
If a kid has to work eight hours, he's fucking losing his mind. If he didn't call him rather the fucking right pronoun or whatever the fuck. See, I don't live in that world. But yeah. and when I when I mean that, I mean that like where I live, I don't fucking I don't have neighbors. I have goats. You know what I'm saying? So I don't live and where where we move to, like it's not really happening here. You know what I'm saying? So so like <laughs> so, so so like it's not my world. But I could watch the news, Fox News. I could watch the news, and 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 almost want to explode with rage. But it, right. I could go outside and nothing's there. So we create all this shit and dealing with my own shit. I put it like this: when I started seventy five hard, I started talking on Instagram stories. Maybe had a hundred followers. And people always worry about that number. They worry about the flowers, all this shit. That's where the insecurity starts. That's the comparison. That's when you're looking. How can I be like this person? That and you're doubting your own shit. That's that's people. That's how. That's the initial fuck you. Like, oh, uh, why? I put so much time into this post. Yeah, they didn't read the caption, Brian. They didn't read the caption. You know what I'm saying? Like, people <laughs> lose their fucking mind yeah. and doing 75 hard upon retiring i was hooked man i was on fucking that's when that's when i was like i was in it i i was fucking hungry i was excited about life and it was easy but that high only lasts so long yeah when you're a home when you're alone for a certain amount of time you fester shit for no reason <laughs> Or some people can, you know what I mean. Right. So when when you're when, when you're trapped in your own mind, I I let it out and talked about it on my story in a sense, like in a mentality sense. You know, I was getting out of the Marine Corps. Look at me, twenty years. Fuck you. Get busy, pussy. You know what I mean. It was easy, right. but then when you take that away, and I'm talking about this now, I'm like, dude, that's not important. Who the fuck? How many grams of protein you had today? Someone fucking killed themselves an hour ago. You know what I mean? Like, and it went like that. And then, it, and then the name came up and I said, you know what? I, this is what I have to do. I'm going to create an app and we're going to move forward with that. And we're, 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 we're moving in the right direction. Things are coming together, but it's, it's a struggle. Like I said, I don't deal with every day's problems, but I can't project to anyone outside the bubble. Right. So so I'm I'm trying to do everything and anything because it's real to me. Because no matter what, so like sometimes I get a message, hey, and I'll tell them straight straight up what's what it is. Like, hey, you know, I deal with this too or that whatever. And I think the big difference is this. You have to take take yourself off that pedestal. Even if you didn't put yourself on it and you have to let some air out, let some feelings out, you have to breathe some of that shit out, not fast, not slow. But if you don't have somebody to go to, like if I was dealing with some shit, I would call you. We hung out for 18 hours, Brian. I would call you. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Like, Same. but that's the power of communication through veterans. And I started noticing that and I'm like, yo, I don't talk to any of my fucking friends. I avoid every fucking body. And, and, and I know if it's me doing it and you might say, oh, he's on social media. What the fuck do you think I'm doing when I'm not on it? You know what I mean? Like people only see five seconds of someone's shit. Yeah. They might have a hundred thousand followers, but they want to commit suicide every fucking day. So I look at it now. I try to change the mentality. Like your life's a fucking gift. Like if you were able to do it, you might see an accident or you see the news and maybe it's getting closer to people, you know, whatever's going on. It's not real till, till you get told someone you knew did it. You know what I mean? It's not, it's someone else's reality. Take, take it. I'll take, I'm going to, I'm going to get real hardcore with it. I never, I, I don't know anyone that got raped. You know what I'm saying? 
but if one of my daughters, my wife, or someone, my my mom, you know what I mean? Something yeah. when it's local, that's when it hurts the most. So I'm I'm trying to just get it out there. Contact care, listen, man, contact these people. No one I'll put it like this. Maybe I'm wrong, Brian. I might be wrong, but how are you? I'm good. Checking the box. That doesn't fucking do anything. Like, how's everyone doing? People go to AA forever and are still alcoholic. Right. So if your thought of committing suicide or your thought, I thought about this earlier and I'm going to put it out to you. Um, we're all killers. We're trained to kill. Maybe some never did anything. Maybe some people worked at the fucking PX. It doesn't matter. You're trained, your mentality. You were pushed. Depending on your branch, you're trained for combat. No matter what branch you were in, there was a training. You shot a weapon. What is the difference when you get out? You think it's harder for us to kill ourselves? That's the easiest thing. You know what I'm saying? Because then you don't have to deal with anything. So that, that, that's what I mean. It's like, what's the bubble? How do we get into that bubble and break it? So those thoughts don't become realities because then, you know, we're not even getting into the numbers, but it's astounding and it's ignored. It's hard, bro. It's, <clears throat> it is one of the biggest, hardest areas to really get ourselves into. And, and what m complicates and makes things worse is I think we're living in a stressful world. Our kids at a, are, are stressing out at a young level because they got cell phones in their hands and they're they have access to adult shit now you know when i was a kid bro it was uh you know go out there ride your bike go play with your friends on the street you know street light comes on you need to bring your ass home you know uh you know now these guys they got access to things and you know i got my kids asking me about the wars and stuff like i you know i wasn't hearing about a lot of this stuff at you know in six seven eight years old you know but now they hear about this stuff because there's kids as little as six, seven, yeah, the god day on cell phones and all that, bro. And and they they have access to YouTube, and YouTube is is not a place for kids, dude. It's just not um, you know, and so there's all these things that these kids have in front of them, and it's inducing fear, it's inducing scare tactics, you know. Now, like, oh my gosh. You know, back when we used to get colds and, and, and stuff like that wasn't a big deal. Then they threw out this word COVID, and now our kids think they get sick. Oh, my gosh, someone's going to die. You know, it's like, relax, relax. We've gotten sick before. I but, think, you know. I, I understand exactly what you're saying, and it's important. And I think it's. But then we don't get no content out. Yep. It's it's. It's the Dr. Frankenstein getting killed by his monster. Like the AI. They, they're like, oh, this shit's going to happen. Then why are you making it better? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if you ever listen to uh, RFK Jr. talk before certain dates in the 60s and 70s, they didn't have all this shit. No. Nah, These right. sicknesses and all this stuff. And I'm not that guy to be like, oh, he didn't say this or it makes sense because we didn't have all this shit before. Like, you know what? Dude, just, a lot of us we were a lot more vitamin D because we were outside more. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, these kids are inside and on tablets, on their games, all that stuff, because they see these streamers making mad money and, and some of them are killing it. No shit. But Bro, that's a percentage, a very small percentage of people make it to that level, you know? I'm I'm too broken to understand like the someone could be on TikTok all day. I don't I don't get it because they're not doing anything. Like the whole my mind goes down so many different ways thinking about just that. Like, but we didn't have that no so so it's like do you hate like that kid's doing it 
I put a picture of me in my dress blues, right? I'll get 50 fucking likes. A Marine right now does it. He'll get 200,000 likes because of the age, because of everything and the analytics and how they do it. And it, if you worry about that, people worry about that and everyone does. But if you really worry about it, that you can't take that shit with you. People talk about money. You know, when you die, you can't take nothing with you. When you close that app, those followers, unless it's your wife and your fucking kids, they they can't help you. That they can't. They're not in your day to day. You know, and I'll so, tell you what. I'll challenge. I'll even challenge you if you huh? if you. I'll even challenge the people out there that are watching. And if it means that much to you, in, in, in social media, and you think that it all means that much, cut yourself off for a couple days and see who contacts you and says, Hey man, what happened to you? Or, Hey, where are you at? See who really gives a shit. You know what I mean? No, that's fact. That, no, that's fact because I'll get in my own head and be like, no one gives a fuck. And, and then I'll get off for a couple of days or something. And you'll hit me up. Eric, people will hit me up. Some people, have, there's a lot of people that don't. So I'm <laughs> like, yo, what are we doing? Like, you know how many veterans follow me? You know how many fucking people I know that I worked with in the Marine Corps that follow me? There's no support. Yeah. But but you know what I realize? It's not other people's jam. Yep. This might be not someone's jam. Like, yo, I know people that got out and they became a cop or they got out and they don't even have social media like that. Like they they want the simpler shit, which I want, but I didn't ask for this. This is my purpose now. You know what I mean? So like this is every day I fight with it, like uh here it is. But I'm able to do it. So when you when you start recognizing the little shit that you're able to walk, you can breathe, you can fucking see, you, you get a little more excited about little things because it's when you don't have heat. When you don't have water, when you don't have electricity or storm fucking, you know, these these places, storms just take their whole house out or whatever. Until it happens to you, you don't know how it feels. Right. Under so 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 like that's that's like the message. Like if I say it, someone likes it, but you didn't share it and it didn't get shared. If it didn't get shared, I don't fucking care. Because I didn't make it for me. I made it so someone that sees it doesn't fucking kill themselves. Like I did the other day. Don't kill yourself. That's as blunt as we can get. Yep. And it's not it's not for everyone. But it is for everyone. Because someone could know someone or whatever. Because there's no prejudice in, in suicide. In veteran suicide, in first responders, EMS, there's no prejudice. There's no gender. There's a, there's only the demons that 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 coach them to drugs and alcohol to 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 overdose to that overthinking that you can't come back from. You 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 know you can't. Yeah. How many cases do you hear of of? There was no signs that this person was going to kill themselves. They they were so happy. You know, I couldn't ever tell. You know, that's just the thing that we never know what people are literally thinking and there's a lot of times people can put on the smiles and 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 are well at doing that because that's just the way that they've coped in life um, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that someone's not having an inner struggle and that's why that sometimes words are so powerful good or bad you know and just that that hey bro i see you out there doing a good job you know just at that moment when he was or she was down on themselves and they needed that. And they were like kind of like thinking about stopping or quitting doing something. But you just said, hey, I see you out there. You're doing a great job. That could be that little push that all they needed, those couple little words that literally fueled them and got them past and, and through a moment in time. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's no, absolutely. Could be. Absolutely. And, 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 and what, what I meant earlier is those little things are great. People, I've gotten messages to you like, what do I do? Make a fucking friend. If you know somebody, 
don't be an asshole. If you know someone and and that you that you know there might be anything wrong or not, talk to them, reach out to them, because that's the problem. Everyone's on fucking apps. They don't have those conversations. I don't want to have those conversations. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? If you're in a fucking bad place, I'm like, all right, I'll hit, I'll hit homie up. Hey, what's up? Hey. But I'm not going to put my shit on him. But if we're cool and they reach out to me and we're breaking bread, I'm more comfortable and inclined to share them, if that makes right. sense. Sure. So that that's that's my vantage. Like when I mean how I look at it, that's how I'm looking at it. Like, yo, there's this I apologize. The kids coming home. Oh, you're good, man. Uh, so that's my that's how I look at it. Like if we're all on our toes, it's not the person you're gonna think. But Brian, the person you you are thinking, he's gonna do it too. So so like so if we're just in a connection and that's how big um that's why like with the hero stock chat it made the experience at hero stock so much different because we were all in bed together already we were all comfortable with each other already and so there, i didn't have that i didn't have no uh, we had nothing but fun right you know what i'm saying so so that's the difference and and i noticed the difference so i went to tennessee went to an ultra run to watch and we were going to do business or whatever and i was losing my fucking mind there too because of where i live my window even gets smaller and i because i used to go out all the time i, would, I was out i live in a different place so that's why you never know when someone's dealing with a situation it doesn't hurt just to reach out and and maybe maybe you're not going to fucking talk to everyone you know but that one person hey that's you know why because you have acquaintance with them like you know dude i'm not saying fucking find a guy in the street you, everyone knows that homeless marine veteran in every town go talk to him go talk you know what i'm saying go reach out to somebody that you already fucking know and just and just have communication with them not those emojis back and forth how you doing i'm good i'm living the dream you know what i'm saying when you <laughs> what's what's i'm living the dream you know whoop. hey if someone tells you that like in the marine corps fuck i must have i'm gonna kill myself and like oh, i'm gonna fucking kill myself co wants to talk to you i'm gonna fucking kill myself that and and you know when when you're just comfortable with just talk like here we go you gotta you gotta be able to just have that connection with somebody and that's how the app's gonna help as well but that passion i i try to if i'm into it i want you to be into it yeah. that's what probably made me good on the marine corps like i love being in the, i love being a marine yep. i want you to fucking love it too like so like Yo, if like this bang right here, right? If I love this, I would have told you about it already. I, you know what I'm saying? Those conversations you have with people, you bring something that's important to you up, and then you tell them about it because you want them to give a shit about it. Right. It doesn't have to be a product or a thing. It could just be yourself. And that's, you know, that, and that's sometimes I think that we as humans are bad at picking up on mm -hmm. is when someone's kind of looking for a f affirmation or something, you know, like that kind of stuff. We tend to like gloss over it and then we'll go right into something about ourselves or, or, or something to that degree. So, you know, and <clears throat> right then that's that opportunity that we lost, that they were looking for that moment in time of, they wanted you to say, Hey, you're doing a great job. Or, Yo, how many or, times you hey, try to invite me to the show? A lot. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and I just, and I, I'm, I'm right. I, and I don't know, chase people, said, honestly, but you know, I was like, no, you don't hold me. Come on. Now. That, that's my boy. And he's, you know, but it, it's not, it. but people don't get it. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm saying. People don't get it. Like 
if someone hits me up or likes this, whatever, I have to absorb it. Think about it. You were, if you were like, yo, can you do it right now? Let's go. The minute I got to think, do you want Coke or Pepsi? Bro. <laughs> like, bro, my, my, you know what I'm saying? That's how, that's where, that's how I am. Yeah. So like, so break like, down, like well, it, calories on this one. Uh, bro, it takes, <laughs> so you're like, you want, I'm asking for the fifth time. I was like, yeah, let's get it. Like every time you asked, I'm like, yeah. When I had the podcast, I was like, yeah, I want to get it. And I'm like, all right, when you want to go? I don't know. All right. Well, fuck. I don't like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it, that whole debate. I'm like this. Okay. I don't know what to do. I guess my, my answer is to say, Hey bro, 12, 12 o'clock on this day. We're in, let's go. <laughs> bro. I'm institutionalized. Like that, that, that's another thing people don't get. Like, yeah, like I've, I've been, I've been in years, a, bro. You, like you want, and, I'm still I'm hardwired at four years and I couldn't even imagine the the wiring yeah. at twenty years, bro. I have no notifications on my phone. Like you see me just pop in the group after like days because I don't get notifications because I don't want because then I always have to keep looking. Every time you get a notification, you gotta look, and then you go from Facebook, and then you're on Instagram, and then you're on fucking TikTok, and now your 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 whole fuck I wasted this time. And then that spot to me, I could just start spiraling after that. Right. How yeah, deep it can get. So, so like, so it's easier. So my therapy is reaching out to people going on here and, and running my mouth and, 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 and trying to push anything because the more humanistic you become, the more you have to show it. Yep. You have to show that you, you have to, let someone know what the fuck is going on because if you don't you know what can help you yep 100 percent. you know what i'm saying and that's the hardest part yeah. well hey brother you know what man i appreciate you coming on here because you know this was a good conversation and i liked a lot of what we had to say and you know it, it, i loved hearing a lot about the recruiting part too because that's a lot that people never really get to hear a, you know that part about it so mm -hmm. like i said i appreciate you coming on definitely probably going to need a part two for you and i um you know anytime you get marines on we can talk forever and this shit could be a three-hour show easy but uh, mm -hmm. we won't keep everybody too much longer but hey man is there any last words for the viewers anything you want to say before we go yeah real quick um the website is done go to uh, sitrow22.com kind of talks about a little bit what we're getting into it's it's a building in process and um there's things that have to get done so we're building we're coming and um sickbear.com has reached out si excuse me sickbear outdoors go to sickbear.com outdoors and they've reached out we partnered in january and percentage of sales are gonna they're gonna donate to sit rev 22 um and they're doing great things right now they're they're doing a ra a raffle for a safari. They're, they make deals with outfitters, but like South Africa, hunting, whatever they got out there, things of that nature. And um, United First Apparel, I he's not a veteran, but once I started seeing what he what he was his message was, I liked it. Um, I, I'm not like an ambassador. I have a code, but like. I'm, I'm pushing my man. We're gonna we're gonna make a deal. We're gonna do a, a, a collaboration um, for the Sitrep 22 and his shit eventually coming out this year. So like this is Take Back America United First Apparel. Um, excuse me. And um, 22 Mohawks. 22 Mohawks. They, they just did the Be Fit Challenge um it's always hard to talk about dave and stacy and everything they're doing because they're non-stop um they they're non-stop going and what they're doing and over 100 100 some dogs they've already helped and helped veterans out and the classes they do the meetups they do the game nights the financial classes um shooting classes on, they're getting ready to do shoot, shooting, the shooting classes and um yeah. i'm on I'm on the the suicide prevention team 
we, we already went through and got certified through the SISM training and then more to come with that. But now I'm just trying to be in the lifestyle. If that makes sense. Like I can't comprehend 800,000 nonprofits for a veteran. Let's say that's not a n- number. I that's just off the rip, but there's hundreds and hundreds of veteran nonprofits, right? Yep. To help veteran suicide. And the numbers only rising. So w- w- at putting action into words, I'm I'm here to to raise money as well with when I when I when we get the, the 5k up and everything. So if, if if a veteran needs to go um uh, what's that joint called? I just had it. Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. So what happens when you're involved with so much? No. <laughs> I probably should. That's not the problem. Uh, it's the place out in California. Well, the place out in California. I'll get more to you because I want to talk about that exclusively one day. Okay. But yeah. um, because, because of uh, the treatment they're doing out there and helping veterans with addiction and things like that. But like to me, I'm just trying to do everything I can to help out and and help Hero Stock become huge. So yeah. that's all I'm doing. But like like I said, United First Apparel doing great things and Sick Bear. The it's the first step in a year ago. Me saying I'm going to create this nonprofit and actual people reached out. And then I reached out and, and communication. So it's like my it's what I'm doing. Like you said earlier, behind the scenes, that that's what I'm trying to do because I can't do this shit downtown. Right. I can't like there'd be three, there's two thousand people where I live. And we live in the mountains. So so it would be me and I don't need that. So I'm trying to get it big, big because when, when we drop the app and then we get shit moving and, and more and more good things to happen, like it's, you know, I, I, videos and stories on social media is the least that I want to do. Right. There's so much more to go and do. That's the microphone I have right now. So I utilize it. Hear you. Well, Hey brother, once again, I appreciate you, man. And, uh, Keep doing what you're doing, brother. And uh, you know, I got your six hundred percent. You know, I'm always here for you and you got my number. You are allowed, you can call me anytime you want, bro, and I'm always gonna be here for you. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks again, brother, and simplify, bro. And uh just hold tight and I'll be back there. All right, friends and fam. Well, that's gonna wrap up another great episode with another great interviewee. That was my buddy Tom Edinger. He is a Marine Corps veteran and uh Guys, go check out SIP Rep 22. Uh, they're out there. He's going to be out there making some great moves in the community um, and definitely helping everybody out there with the mental health. Tom is a great person. Go check him out. His social medias, all that stuff. He can give you some great motivation. Once again, we thank you guys all for watching, tuning in, and we thank you guys so much for sharing out the show. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. Make sure... It's not kicking your ass and you're out there kicking it. Till next time. Urgh.